and it's more about the conversation today so i have given you some uh, cute footage i have to at least keep your eyes amused i want to take some time today to talk to you about myself and a little bit about my journey and more than anything i really want to open up the conversation when i started this i had been very disconnected um, I am a survivor and I will talk more about that but part of me surviving was detaching to do so and when you do that you become very disconnected from the world around you. I was not disconnected from the universe and I was not disconnected from nature and my animals but I had to a degree lost my faith in humanity and didn't exactly know how to live anymore. When I started this channel, one of the main reasons was that I got such pleasure and relief out of watching the girls and on some level I hope that out there someone else might get some benefit of it too. The thing I really did not expect, and I have spoken about this a couple of times, was this phenomenal community of people. And in a lot of ways the best thing I ever did was taking some of those conversations off YouTube Someone summed it up to me perfectly in the last week and that is that I had the piggies but I didn't have the support and it has been the best thing I could have done. That old analogy that sometimes the best medicine is knowing you're not alone and you're not, none of you are. I'm here for you in the comments, I'm here for you in other capacities. There are different ways you can get in touch with me and I will list them in the description and I'll put as many links up as I can in regards to that. I will talk to you about my experiences here but I will not talk about the personal nitty gritties of that. I will though happily tell you if you'd like to know. So drop me a comment, I'll um, let you know how to get in touch. One of the ways I thought I could potentially do this is once every week or so I could make a short video when I talk about one of the different techniques and ways that I found for myself that had huge, huge benefit. Um, if this is something you would be interested in, uh, let me know. Uh, the meditation obviously is very important to me in all of this and had I not made that decision to start meditating on a daily basis over 15 years ago I wouldn't be standing here now nor would I be capable of having this conversation with you. But it wasn't so simple, there's a lot more to it. I wrote my way out of it in a large degree. I faced all of those bad parts of myself that I needed to and I faced the truth. I have a stubborn belief in some ways that once I actually see something the choice is then mine and I'm normally incredibly determined not to let it affect me in an adverse way again. Sometimes that can take a long time, I have to tackle myself and all of my own triggers and cycles I've formed around it but eventually I get there. So I spent 30 years of my life in PTSD from the age of 6 to 36 years of age. Around five years before that, so around the age of 31, I suffered some deaths in my life. I became an insomniac, I suffered very bad depression and I had recurring nightmares for around five years. During this time I had my crystal shop which I will have spoken to you about before which I loved more than I can ever express. It was my air and my reason and I loved every second of it. Shortly after I closed the door of my business I went on the first holiday I'd had in over seven and a half years. Um, I hadn't had more than one day off in a row and that whole time I would be in the shop all day and I would make jewellery all night at home and then I would repeat. I 
this was 10 years ago plus maybe 10 days so this has all been quite recent um a lot of this for me and um on that day i nearly died in the black saturday bushfires we had here it took me another three four months until i had a complete nervous breakdown I did, though, through all of that, finally get to the cause and not the symptom, and I found a way to survive. About a year after that, I came off all medication, and I have had not had any episodes since. During that time, I saw a psychologist, and she spent five years asking me the same question, and that is, how did you survive this? People don't survive this. How did you do that? And we spent a lot of time trying to work that out. I often joke that it was sheer obstinance alone, uh, though maybe willpower is a better way to look at it. But there are ways I survived, and I have spent a long time trying to work out what a lot of they, them are, and these are some things I can share with you. About a year after I came off all my medication and got my life sorted, I had another bad incident where my dog was badly hurt and three weeks later I was badly hurt. I ended up with seven staples in the back of my head. I remember in the moment deciding to fight for my life and it's one of the few things that's kept me going, though I still can't to this day explain why. Everyone thought I would fall apart again, but I didn't. I walked through it. I got there. I became stronger. It's now eight years later, and none of that has changed. What I suffer with now is the aftermath of all of it. My wiring doesn't quite work. I can't distinguish the difference between hunger, thirst, and being tired. I have chronic fatigue syndrome and I cannot do as much as I used to do. But the biggest cure for me in the last year was finding those guinea pigs and then going onto YouTube and finding some of those wonderful people on the other side of the screen. So if you'd like to know, let me know. I'm ready to talk. And know this more than anything, you're not alone. The last thing we need when we go through this is sympathy. What we really need is empathy. And we know the difference. Hi everyone, I hope you're having a really good day. I thought I would take a bit of time today to actually talk about what meditation is and some of the basic ways that you can start to do this. I know a lot of people would like to meditate but don't quite know where to start so hopefully this will give you a few pointers and of course you already have a backlog catalog of um, guinea pig meditations I've already made as well so you can put some of these techniques to use. I personally practice transcendental meditation, which means I don't use any music and meditate in silence. I certainly did not start that way though. When I first began meditating, I found my mind had quite a phenomenal self-defense mechanism against it and would do everything in its power to distract me. Um, it really did not want me to meditate and start to take some of its control away so initially I used a lot of basic guided meditations and a lot of simple music particularly instrumental music and a lot of this music is what I have been using in the guinea pig meditation videos I have already made and I will make a lot more of these as well where this is particularly good is that it keeps your mind busy and distracted. 
and lets you slip into the meditation a lot easier without having to fight your mind so much. After doing this for a long time, I started to do more guided meditations, which taught me how to focus a lot more. And after a time of that, I turned all of the music and external noise off and started with the trans transcendental meditation, which I have continued to work with ever since. At the core of it, meditation is about being present, being in the moment, calming yourself, not focusing on all of the external distractions and just being for that time. And the simplest way we do that is around our breath. So if nothing else, you just need to focus on your breath and everything else will just automatically happen around that. And with the breath, all you need to do is breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and repeat this over and over. This is often called circular breathing and each time you do this, you'll relax a little bit more. Your breath will take you where you need to, it will relax you, it is the core of us. I also personally find it difficult to meditate lying on my back because often, particularly in the early days, I would fall asleep. This is something I don't have a problem with anymore, but in the early days it certainly was. I prefer to meditate sitting and it's important to make sure that your feet and your arms are not crossed. So if you're going to be sitting, you want to make sure you're sitting back in a chair, that your legs are apart and that your hands are placed on either side of your body so that they're not touching, you don't have your arms crossed or, or anything like that. And then it's simply just a matter of, you know, if you're watching something, then focusing on that and listening to the music and focusing on your breathing. And if not, sitting back and focusing on the breathing and taking it where it goes. Another one of the ways that I found it very easy to meditate to start with was standing up. Um, now that simple technique of circular breathing can do wonders. Even if you uh, just do that three times, you will feel a lot more centered and grounded. Um, I used to use this a lot if I had a decision to make and it would just bring me into the moment and then I could decide what I needed to do. So when you do meditate standing up it's important to make sure that you have a good stance so you make sure your feet are shoulder length apart that you feel grounded and rooted into your body not lax in your ankles it's important you stand upright with your back straight and um, same time your hands not crossing over and at either side one of the exercises I found very helpful in my early meditation days was a simple exercise that they call Mother Earth, Father Sky and at the core of it this is about grounding ourselves and at the same time reaching upwards and connecting with ourself or God or Source or whatever it is you decide to call it and this is just a matter of each time you breathe in you view the energy coming up through your body up to Father Sky. And when you breathe out, you then view that coming back down through your body and down into the earth and grounding you. And you just repeat that process. So as you breathe in, it's up to Father Sky. And as you breathe out, back down to Mother Earth. Even doing that two, three times um, makes a big difference. For me, it makes me feel a lot stabler, a lot calmer. Um, okay. And there are other ways we can meditate as well. Often for me, I find I meditate best when I'm walking, particularly in nature, and my head is clear, I don't have any distractions, and I just walk and the process starts. And at the core of it, the reason... We meditate is for many things, mindfulness, um, 
discovery of self. But um, at the core of it, I meditated so my life could become, become a waking meditation, that it would bring me the calm and the focus and the balance that I needed. It's, it's now been over 15 years and at the very least I meditate every night before I go to sleep. Sometimes it's only five minutes, sometimes it's a lot longer. Um, this enables me to sleep a lot better, particularly seeing I suffered from insomnia for a while in earlier days. So that's really the basic of how you meditate. Um, so what I would suggest from here is that you go and have a look at one of my meditation videos, sit yourself down, focus on your breathing for a few minutes, enjoy the piggies, let the music do its work and uh, go from there. And if you meditate yourself and have any particular techniques or way you find help, particularly in these early stages, drop a comment down below. I'd love to have a discussion about it. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.